And I also got to check out Apple TV's newest musical, their new take on A Christmas Carol, starring two of the most iconic comedic actors of the 21st century. And Ricky Flex, I'm really excited to talk about it. I think I shocked you a little bit. And I thought it was when I texted you earlier and I said, is it weird that I'm excited to watch Spirited? And then you responded, well, I haven't seen it. <laughs> That's what you said <laughs> back to me. And I said, are you kidding me? I'm going to have to go a little solo review here. I don't Yes, I, I, I don't think this movie was, number one, promoted well. I, I really don't. Two, I, I've heard no buzz about it. And it's not doing bad critically. Like as a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, that's not that bad for a movie that looks bad, like on the face of it. So, and it's Apple TV, so uh, the credibility is just not there. Not a lot of people have Apple TV, and that's probably why I haven't heard much about this. And I guess audiences' response to it. And yes, I passed on seeing it this weekend. I will see it because, like you said, it's two of the most iconic not just comedic, just like actors and celebrities in general in the world today. So I feel like I have to see it, but I also don't have Apple TV plus. So that's going to be a problem. I found it really interesting because you have like pretty much the most iconic comedic actor of the two thousands with Will Ferrell. And then we've seen the death of the comedy in many aspects, especially theatrically. And the one, the way that we've kind of seen the comedy live on, at least in some capacity, is with Ryan Reynolds with Deadpool. That's where that's a way where the genre has kind of uh, limped along with the Deadpool 1 and 2. And I think uh, those movies are hilarious, right? But they're built into the superhero archetype, just like we've seen other movies try and take on a certain uh, genre within the landscape of typically the MCU, Right. And we've seen the Batman, what it did with like a noir type detective story taken in the form of an absolute Batman movie, it was clearly, obviously. So I just thought it was interesting where you have basically two generations coming together, right? That kind of make up what we know as comedy in the 21st century. That's a good point. Yeah. I, it's, it's interesting too, because these are also two people that are very outgoing on social media. Mm -hmm. And very popular on social media and through, through different avenues. So it's also like not just appealing from a movie person, but also just people like most people in the world that have post social media that would want to watch this movie just because of that factor. But again, like I haven't heard anything on social media about this movie. I don't know if I'm just missing something. I don't know. But I haven't watched a single Christmas movie yet. And it's December 5th recording this. And this can't be my first one, I feel like. I, I, Ricky, you know what? It's not going to crack your top 10, like like rewatched every year, right, type of Christmas movie. But I kind of like what they did here. When you talk about these two actors, we've talked about like expanding their range and doing something different. Will Ferrell, like he's been behind the scenes a lot. He's been executive producing and producing. He was in Eurovision, I think, a couple of years ago for Netflix. Saw that like, one. Here, it seems like he saw an opportunity to combine with one of the most prolific comedic actors with Reynolds, but he also got to showcase something in his repertoire that we only see glimpses of in most of his movies. This is a full blown musical and Will Ferrell took it and ran with it. And I actually was impressed with a lot of the music sequences. Um, I, it felt like there was a lot of production quality that went into this movie. Like the choreography I thought was spectacular. There was, I think in my opinion, too many musical sequences, but I think Will Ferrell looked at this as like, I'm just going to show I am a multifaceted guy. I can be right. This performer, this singer, this full on entertainer, like well-rounded entertainer for an entire movie. And I think he, he outperformed Reynolds here. Uh, I also like seeing Reynolds do something different because we, what do we complain about Ryan Reynolds? He's the same guy in every single movie. He wasn't that different in this. But, right, he's singing, he's dancing. I can't, admit, I can't say that he has an astounding voice, but I just like the idea of him trying something different. And he, you, you mentioned social media. Ryan Reynolds has posted, like, a couple things regarding this movie, the, choreo the, the dancing lessons that he and Will Ferrell had to go through. It seems like he had a spectacular time bouncing off Will Ferrell in this movie. It was just really kind of refreshing to see him try something. You know, and I think he's getting he's getting around 50 now. I think he's mid 40s at this point. Who knows how much longer he's going to be playing Deadpool. He's already played the character twice. Now entering the MCU alongside Hugh Jackman. 
So I just like seeing him do something with a little uh, little spice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, I like that. I like that. And obviously, like you talked about Deadpool, I think that's what he's becoming known uh, for now. Like I think in the 2000s, like he was on the come up. I think people mostly know knew him for Van Wilder, Just Friends, Waiting, like you know those type of movies, rom com style. But now it's like full blown Deadpool, and he's still doing like the Adam Project, Red Notice with big stars, like right, like team ups there. But at the end of the day, he'll always be known for Deadpool. So it's good to diversify a little bit. And that's like you said, like the biggest complaint is that he's not diversified. So I think this is a great opportunity. And how like the singing, like how do he do? I don't know how Ryan Reynolds sings if he's trying. It was, and like it seemed like he was singing in a way where he was really nervous that he was going to crack his voice. You know, that's it seems like how we try and sing and hit high notes in a car. That's what it felt like. And Will Ferrell just seemed like such a natural and he really just embraced the moment when it looked like Reynolds was just like man, like I'm kind of out of my depth, but I'm just going to go for it anyway. But he's an athletic dude. He pulled off the dancing, like athletically, like he looks, does the choreography much better than Farrell. But Farrell's like, what, he's pushing 60 at this point, maybe well, even a little older than 60. Well, we all know he's a mix of Fergie and Jesus when singing. <laughs> so it's, I think we knew Rick, it was going to come from him. Ricky, and I'm not going to lie. Um, some of, oh, I, I, was watching last night. It was like 2 a.m. It was 1 a.m. And I fell asleep. I had to rewind. And then when I woke up the first time, there was a moment where Will Ferrell was like his big sequence, right? In the third act, him really like letting it go, like his moment for the movie and really like showing, right? The vocals that you were just talking about, ones that we got glimpses of in Step Brothers. And he let it loose. And I was just like, wow, I got to rewatch this. And I, at 1 a.m., I rewound it an hour and watched the whole thing through. And I'm I'm really happy I did. I think there was I, I there was a song in this movie, the same one that I rewound. I made sure to save it on my Spotify, right? Immediately, it just seemed like like there were some songs here that I think kind of missed, and I almost found unnecessary, as I said before. But that one really hit, and it just seemed like Will Ferrell still got it. You know, I just want to see him do more, and uh, he's challenging himself here, and uh, maybe uh. I'm excited to see what he does next because, but I'm just at the same time, Apple TV, right? Doesn't really do stuff like this with major movie stars, like two paired back to back and back to back with Reynolds and Farrell. It almost has like a Netflix vibe to it where they probably threw a bag at him. But at the same time, I'm telling you, this production quality is pretty good. Um, where this movie really fell apart actually was the script. Uh, it had an interesting concept. Uh, it's taking on a Christmas carol, but more modernized take. You got the ghost of Christmas present with Will Ferrell. And he's almost playing like an Alan Gamble, other guys type of role where he's like strictly business, but he has like this past that he has to confront. And Reynolds is like the Scrooge of this story. And it's very modernized. They do like a, uh, he has a job related to social media and like it's basically gathering attention any way possible through like social media. And, uh, it, it made sense. Like, it was like, yeah, like you have to make this kind of uh, a story that's built around this or a modern audience. But then it like takes the perspective of not only like Reynolds coming to terms and like becoming like this new person by the end of the movie. It's like going back and forth with like Will Ferrell doing so. They're going back and forth between two different worlds, between the real world and the spirit world with the ghost of Christmas past, present, future. It gets a little like confusing at some point when it really shouldn't be. And I think as a result, too, it was like the lack of focus going between them both. They didn't know how to end the movie. It was like 127 minutes. They could have ended it like five different times. And I was just like, that's you long for a musical. And it's a Christmas movie, right? You want to be in and out. And like it has a family type vibe. You don't want a family movie that's over two hours long. But it seemed like we're putting this on streaming. People are going to watch it. They can pause it, whatever they want. And uh, rewind it if they need to, just like I did. So I think they just said like, OK, let's just let these two guys cook. We know it's not going to be a masterpiece, but it's going to be good holiday viewing, which it was. Yeah, and I'll just bring back to the Apple TV Plus connection there. Will Ferrell did – remember he did the Paul Rudd, the Shrink Next Door TV series? Oh, you're right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so he has that connection there, not like a Tom a Tom Hanks uh, connection with Apple TV Plus, but, you know, it's one that's starting to build. But, yeah, like Will Ferrell the past decade has been like kind of a rut. So, like, if you think about it, like the best thing he's done is Daddy's Home. And that got a sequel. And that's obviously daddy's home. Like that's enough said there. But now it's like, hey, you know what? Like this is maybe good for him. It sounds like it sounds like this is pretty good. 
Um, he's going to be in the Barbie movie. Maybe that's just going to be a cameo. But I think that might be good, some good publicity to bring him back in the limelight. And then who knows? Like, who knows what's going on after that? He's going to be in a movie with Reese Witherspoon. It's going to be a comedy. Maybe that's going to be a hit. I don't know. But I don't know. I, I, I love Will Ferrell, so I would love to see a little comeback tour. Not like full-blown 2000s, but I don't know. Just still like, hey, this guy deserves to be like making movies still as an A-lister. 100%. And that was like my big takeaway from this. It's like Will Ferrell still has the magic. Like he still has the presence on screen. And it was comforting to see. This was maybe top three funniest movies I've seen this year. And I wasn't, I didn't know whether to expect that with the musical type setting. Uh, but it's just seeing these two goats just like rallying back and forth was great. You know, and you could only imagine like the improvisation that goes into this. Maybe it plays into this two, two hour plus runtime. Um, this it was just a good time to spend with a couple movie stars that people just embrace and want to spend time with. That's what these two guys are, and it's comforting to put them in a Christmas movie. It's like it has it had all the pieces. It's just the story wasn't concise enough. It wasn't simple enough. They had to overcomplicate it and make it seem like it was like I guess more unique than anything. And they want to bring something new to the table with the Christmas Carol has been like done, re redone and redone, remade, animated, you know, different twists here and there. Scrooge, when you think of Bill Murray, this is much more lighthearted than Scrooge, right? I don't know if that's kind of a tease, potentially could be on our list of 10 most essential movies to watch during Christmas time. Personally, I don't have it there. We'll see what Ricky Flick says later on. But overall, solid movie. Um, definitely entertaining watch. I'm going to go with a 69 out of 100. 69 right. out of 100 for when you when you said top three funniest movies of the year you sold me like i i, I i'm gonna watch it 